on an open pie. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. <clears throat> Yuletide carols. All right. Let's do it. Hey guys, Josh with Happy Little Landscapes here. Uh, today we're going to do a landscape featuring a little house with a Christmas tree out front just to get into the winter spirit. So, we've got our canvas already primed with uh, Bob's Liquid White across the whole canvas, nice and slick. Good uh, indication on whether or not you have enough. You kind of want to see your fingerprint if you go and touch the canvas. That's a good indicator. All right, guys, we have Van Dyke Brown, uh, Dark Sienna, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Alizarin Crimson, and for right now, Titanium White. And we're leaving our space down here for all of our Christmas light colors. We'll have the yellows and the greens and the reds and all that. So what I want to do to start is get a little bit of the Alizarin Crimson on both sides of our one inch brush. You could use a two inch brush, whatever you want. I'm going one inch brush just for the size of this canvas. We have an 18 by 24 inch prime stretch canvas and uh, we're going to create a little scene here. So let's see how it goes. We'll put a little red in and we'll start our blending, right? Kind of leave a spot for some clouds, some light areas, put some of this in. We're really not doing much, but kind of just dumping color onto the canvas. It's not really blended out. We're going to use our big two inch brush for that. And we get a little bit more, maybe a little darker up here. Remember, leave a spot for a cloud, maybe come down in here, wherever you want in your mind. It's a nice little purplish pinkish color that's just for this alizarin crimson. And now what we'll do, we'll go in with our Prussian Blue, which is very strong. So you just need a little bit of color right on the end of the brush. I didn't even color it all the way. It's just on either side of the corners. And we'll come up here and we'll test it out and see that we didn't get enough. That's not as dark as I want it to be. So we'll get a little bit more and throw it up in here. And then we'll come back in with our, uh, with our black and really darken up the sky. Give us a nice wintry dark sky. And you can just let this blue mix with the alizarin crimson that's underneath. And that's going to make this nice purple color. And like I said, don't get rid of all your white areas. You're going to need these light areas to put our clouds in. The more paint you put on the canvas, the more difficult it's going to be to keep adding layers of paint. And then, you know, you're going to end up with a big blobby mess up there. So we'll put some of our blue down in here. That nice little bluish, purplish, reddish sky. And then what we'll do is go right into our uh, midnight black, get a fair amount of it on the brush, and just every so often, don't cover up our light spots, remember. But up in the corners, especially, we want it nice and dark up here. And again, we haven't blended our color yet, we're just dropping it onto the canvas. You know, maybe you want a dark spot right there in the middle. Put a little shadow, put your cloud over that little shadow there. So then I'm really going to get a lot of the Prussian blue. Still haven't washed our brush, right from alizarin to Prussian blue to our black and then back to blue. And we just lay on these real thick dark blue spots, right? Right where our black was, just dump it on there, big chunks of it. And then what we're going to do is leave some of those unblended or less blended than the other ones. So what we're gonna do is switch to our two inch brush now. I'm gonna put down my palette and hold the canvas just cause this easel is a little shaky on the, on the box here. We're gonna start with our lower color, our brighter color, and really push hard. Push hard, really get in there and blend it where you can't even almost tell where it is. Now I don't want to come up here and then go back into here. It's going to ruin this nice pink sky. So we're going to start from the bottom. And we're going to work our way up. And that way, going side to side in X patterns, right? Sometimes you can go like this and then flip it, go like that along the same side. And what we've done is kind of made it where you really can't tell where the red stops and where the black begins. And the more that we do that in our sky, the better it's going to be. And I always say, take as much time as you want in your sky. The longer you take, the better it's going to look. It's going to be more blended out. You're not going to see real, you know, crisp lines of where color is. And the more blended it is, 
the more beautiful it's gonna look. See, I don't wanna come too far down on the side now. And then we're covering over our little light area, but that's okay, just very lightly. And over here, we're pushing very hard. And the closer we come to the middle, the lighter we're pushing, so we're not dragging that color across, right? And we have a beautiful blended sky up there that's mixed with our liquid white primer that's on the canvas. And if you ever get too much paint and you start to drag paint across, you know there's too much on your brush. So just to be quick, we're gonna dab it on a paper towel. Blend that in very lightly. And right there, you get a beautiful little blended sky with bits of red and blue and white, darker blue, black up here. And if that's not dark enough for you, screw it, let's put some more dark in. Ooh, that's nice right there. And we're not gonna go all the way across, but we're gonna leave like a, like an angled shape here to blend our sky with. Take our two inch brush, start on the outer edges, not pushing too hard, and then up here, again, not too hard, nice long strokes, and that's gonna create this dark, stormy look on that side of our sky. And if you've done your job correctly and blended these enough, you won't drag color across from either side, even into our light area. So, take your time, blend your sky, so you can't tell where the blue stops and where the red begins. And then you'll be perfect. And then just to take our brush strokes out very lightly across the whole canvas. And then down in here with what's left on our brush, this blue, we can make shadows in our snow, right? Just wipe off our brush down here, clean it off real hard, scrub off all that blue. And that'll end up being our shadowy, snowy color. And I'm thinking our cabin, Again, if you blended it enough, it doesn't matter that we've wiped it down here. It's not gonna transfer back up to our color. If you start getting bits of blue and stuff like that, get this little hair out of there, then you know you've either got too much paint on your canvas, too much on your brush, or you haven't blended it out sufficiently yet. And even though we've gone over this whole canvas, we still have a light area here for our clouds. I'm seeing this shape kind of like this. Maybe we could put another one in front of it. You could pop in a real bright one over this black area and it'll look real neat. All right, so we wash our brushes, liquid paint thinner, out of the thinner into our trash can and then onto our little beater bucket. I suggest you get a beater bucket. You don't want to be doing it like Bob does it where he just, and stuff goes everywhere. If you want to keep your place nice, that is. I'll try not to sing along with the Christmas carols that are playing in the background. I don't want to scare you guys off too bad. All right, so now that we've got our sky laid out, I can kind of tell where I want my trees to cover my red. So we'll have this nice, maybe over here we leave, leave a light spot. So in order to make the tree color that I want to use today, we're going to take a fair amount of black in here. Good amount of the alizarin crimson, good chunk of it and then just a little bit of the blue. You don't need a lot of blue because it's very strong. And what this will do is make a beautiful dark purple color. It'll end up being our trees in the background. Look at that beautiful color there. And mush it. For this, we really want it mixed up well. So we're trying to smush out all the colors together. And then in order to check what we have, we're gonna take, wipe off our knife here so we don't dilute our white. Well, we're gonna take a bit of white run it through this lightest area and oh look at that purple and the more you mix it the more these shades are going to go away and it's just going to make this kind of purpley gray color so you decide where you want it's a little bit better if you leave them a little marbled so you have light areas and dark areas in the same paint so when we're mixing with our brush it's going to come onto the canvas just like that use this fan brush here today number six fan brush and we're going to get a lot of paint on it See if this one wants to cooperate today. So we've got our very light purpley color, which we'll probably have to end up making more of. And we're gonna come in here and up near the corner, we're gonna start dropping in our evergreen trees. Just by pushing on the canvas, right? We don't wanna make them all the same height. 
and we don't want to make them all the same dark color so allow some light color to show through come back get some of our more of our gray here pop it up pop it down kind of like a heart monitor you know what i mean make them come up and down shine kind of muddy up the bottom like this right down to our horizon line right here right where we made our snow shadows and then the smaller you make them, the further away they're going to look in the distance. So decide what you want your shape to look like. And you can tell every so often if you pull out. Maybe you go this way. And this is all just in your mind. It doesn't matter. We can change the look of it. So you figure out how you want your land to lay. Right? Oh, I, can, I can do it this way. I can do it that way. And then what we'll do is with a little bit of our darker color, we're going to pull that into the light color we made. Get it on both sides of the brush. And then from this side, we're going to make it a little bit taller, right? Especially taller than the trees that are going to be in the back here. Why don't we drop in just a little evergreen shaped guy? Right here, right? Put in a few more. Up coming in front of these other trees back there but we're going to stop right here so we can put our snow in and then we'll continue and we'll hide it back there and then for the rest of these just pulling right through our dark color nice and dark on there and we're going to put a little forest in next to this guy and just like that it's going to look like all these evergreen trees are out here. So now that we're done with our forest here, we have a lighter purple color. We have our darker purple color coming in. So it's going to look like this is in front. Probably put our cabin right here. So but first we need to add in some clouds because if I get moving too quick, I always forget the clouds. Always, always. And some people have asked, can you take a more in-depth view on how we make clouds? So that's what we'll do now. You can even use the same brush that we just cleaned off, that we just made our trees with. And what we're going to do is get a big chunk of our titanium white, put it off to the side, and now we can kind of mix our colors in with it. So we'll take the smallest little bit of blue, not even, it's like super small, because it's so powerful in there that you don't need a whole lot. Make our thing here. Come in, and what we're going to do is kind of scoop up this paint on the edge of our fan brush here. So it's nice and globby. And then we'll just decide where we want to put our little wispy clouds and just mush it on in the shape that you want. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then what we'll do is go in with our dry one inch brush. It's gotta be dry. And just make the littlest, lightest circles and start to blend your cloud shape out. Doesn't have to be straight along the bottom. Doesn't have to be fully blended. It can be however you want. And then you just very lightly Swipe up, swipe across, and we have a very uh, kind of faded far away cloud over there. So now what we'll do is we'll take some more white paint and we'll drop a bigger, closer guy right in front of him. And just like I said, just mush it. Don't worry about the top line up here, but everything else underneath, just kind of fill it in so that when we take our one inch brush and blend it, It'll cover that guy back here. We've got a little bit of space in between. And just with the very corner of the brush, blend very lightly. Kind of leave it globby in some areas. When you take your two inch brush and swipe, swipe up like this, and then come across, you get these very cool layers of paint that lay on top of each other. And you can swipe it as much as you want until you're happy with the way it looks. Try not to touch our trees down here. And then we got a good looking cloud section up there. And now I'm gonna go straight with a brand new one, straight into some titanium white. We're gonna make our little wispy cloud back here. Same section. And what you wanna do, you don't wanna do them too quick. Do each one individually. I used to, uh, I used to try to lay them all out and then come back in and at the same time do them all and it just doesn't work as well. Take the time, make your different shapes. And you can see we had our lighter area for our 
little cloud here that we can put in. Just kind of pull it down, leave it globby like that. It, as long as you don't touch that top edge and have one sticking out, it's going to look really cool when you go to uh, blend them in because you'll have all these different layers in your cloud. It'll be really textured. So still haven't cleaned our blender brush. We're just going to use the top corner. I paint very lazily. I don't like to clean my brushes a lot. So if I can get away with not cleaning them and showing you guys how to take a little bit less time cleaning all your stuff, like again, swipe up, go across. We got a very beautiful little layered cloud in there off in the distance. Now we can even take some of our blue. Shoot, we can go straight into the blue if we want. Kind of pop in some blue shadowy bits there. Very lightly again. Right over our blue, even lighter than we did for the initial cloud. All right, we're gonna swipe up. And then we got a pretty sweet cloud right there. A little blue in there, it's gonna draw people's eye. You can even take, if you want, put a little bit of the dark color right in just the smallest bit. Just a little teeny line, and then we'll blend that sucker in. And it'll look like a little shadow on the bottom. Now you gotta work at your clouds until you like the way they look. Doesn't matter to anybody else. And for me, I don't want so much shadow. So I'm gonna do it a little bit more until I like the way that it looks. Swipe up, kind of takes the brush strokes out, come across, perfect little cloud in the background there. Let's clean off our fan brushes. Try not to sing along with the Christmas carols. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Just want to see me paint. Now you can see we've got our clouds are done that we should have done before. We have our shadowy forest back here, which is getting further in the distance, so it makes it seem like there's a little kind of a ravine in here when this section of forest is growing in front. So very lightly grab at the base of your trees, pull up. You can push in and pull up. And what that does is just blends the blends the trees and makes them kind of blurry in the distance. Again, you don't have to make them all the same. Just swipe across like we did with our clouds and it just makes them kind of blurry. We'll do the same thing over here. Not pushing very hard. And to the side. You can do it almost all the way to the top if you want. We might as well try to... This guy's going to get framed anyway, but try to make it look like there's another tree over there. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll take some snow. We can even take some of that blue snow, put a little bit of shadow in with it so it's nice and kind of grayish. Take it the base of our trees there. Kind of pull sideways. You want to go a little bit down, but mostly sideways. Like that. And it's not going to look like a lot. When you get these little ridges in your snow, you'll have these little hills and snow banks where you, know, you can just imagine the, the wind just whipping ice across those little snowy hills. And you want a fair amount of it on your brush in order to show up and give you those cool little lines. All right, so now we can see we've got our forest back here. Got our other line coming in front of it like that. So it's like this side's almost coming down now. Swipe across. And then we have our little area here that we haven't touched yet. So for that, what we'll do is, I really don't like the way that tree looks back here. So we're gonna give it a little, just a little highlight of dark. Started getting too light on me, I think. But nothing is unfixable. You can always fix it. And it works out good if you've got some dark down around the base of your trees. And then when we flip this up, there's going to look like even more shadows and more trees back there. Just like snow bits back in, 
change the angle of our land just by pulling on the shadows of that. Get our snow, long strokes. Now we've got a, some land coming in this way and some coming in that way. And just to accent them, I'll do a couple more. There we go. Big, thick, snowy drifts right here, right? Kind of see that we're on the side of a hill right here. And what that's going to do is when we pull in our land from this way and go straight across what we just made, it's going to look like different planes. Not planes, but planes. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get a little bit more snow <clears throat> right here. All right, almost like we've got these two hills that are coming into this little deep area in here. That's what it looks like to me anyway. You don't have to cover up all of your snow. You can even take if you want a few shadows, a few more shadows in here. And just kind of blend them in like that. As dark as you want, as light as you want. And the more you go back and forth, the more blended they will become. Like that, take some more of my thick white snow. Glob it on. I don't want to get too crazy because I know I want a cabin back here. So, why don't we just knock that out. Come up here and decide where our cabin is going to live. And we're just going to scrape out a shape that we want to use. Because you don't want all this other boulder paint, even though it's very little amount. You don't want that on the, on the canvas while you're trying to do it. So. Even though know, you can't really see what I'm doing here, I'm kind of mapping out the shape that I want to use for our cabin and just uh, pulling down on the paint and rid of everything that we don't want to use. And then what we can do is mix up a little of our dark sienna and our Van Dyke brown. Right, throw a little dark sienna in there, a little bit more white, and then we'll pull it out into this cool kind of wood shape, the wood color. We'll go up here and just drop it on. Like that. It doesn't matter if there's different hues or colors, we're just very lightly plopping it on there. Use a bit of the black for our roof, just to show you guys where we are here. Change it to the shape that you want it to look like. here. Use our darker bit of our dark sienna on this side of our cabin. And just so it's a different shadow. Different color. A little darker over here than over there. Just like that. Gonna have our roof coming in. We got this out there. Our roof along the back. And just kind of cut in where you want it to be. We'll probably have to get some more white out. Pull it out thin, make it up, kind of lay out where we want our roof to be. Pull it down. Don't forget this side. it up if you want to do it that here and just touch it touch the canvas and pull away and you get these cool shadows and stuff and make sure our roof is perspectively all right make our evening over a little bit more And then, what we'll do is take a little bit of our dark color here, just on the edge, and just touch, make some boards. If you want to do it too much, you'll overdo it, and uh, it's just not going to look right. If you run out, come back, get some more. Can 
pull it straight down like that. Edge. Now what we'll do is kind of cut off where we don't want a catamectomy like Bob says. And that is all fine. I bought a knife, take our brush that we've been laying down all this snow with, still haven't wiped it, and just almost straight across and in our snow and stuff. Straight across. And we've got a little, almost like a shadow there, which we can lighten up if we want to. Now what I'll do with the door is scrape off our door shape. Right. Which just makes it easier to put the, the door color on if there's no paint on the canvas there. And you can almost like fill in this little thing. It's very easy. I almost want it. Just like that. And then we can take a little bit of liquid white and just kind of make our door highlighted there. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want it to be perfect. It ends up looking cool if it's a little messy. Like that. And shoot, we could even take a little bit of brown and make like a little path just by putting it on the small edge of the knife, pushing and just getting bigger as you come out. Okay. Pretty easy. What we'll do now is mix up some more of our dark tree color. Because I said we were going to put a Christmas, uh, Christmas tree in this guy. It is so hard not to sing along to this music. Even though I'm not one of those people that gets into Christmas too early. I mean, I could listen to Christmas anytime, but... All right, mix up our tree color. And then I'm not, I don't want to use a brush this big to make our little Christmas trees that's going to be outside of his house here. So what we'll do is we'll get a much smaller brush. Never use this brush, but it's very small. Little guy, it's got a hair sticking off. You don't want that to... All right, back to our little tree color here with our smaller fan brush. And get the whole fan brush covered in this dark paint, which is, we haven't diluted it with white, so it's going to be much darker than these, and it's going to stand out in front. So what we'll do, we'll put our little Christmas tree there. And sometimes I'll just make a little line, just very faint, just to keep me straight on the way down. And then with the very corner of the brush, we're not going to go in straight, we're going to go in on an angle and just with the corner touch, and touch, and touch, and touch, while pushing upward. And that... The harder you touch, the more you go down, the harder you push in, so you transfer that paint down there. We'll even go a little bit further down. Just like that. Okay, so we'll take the bottom of him, and just very lightly, you don't want to pull it so far that you go past your little shadowy bit here, but just very lightly pull out, don't mess with our path too much. And there you go, you got a little tree right there. We still have a ton of paint on our brush, but it's kind of starting to split the bristles apart on this one. So the dew will go kind of like this, and it's just looking like there's gaps in between. So now we're gonna have to decide which side we use. So let's put another tree back here, right? a little bit, and we can do about the same height, same size, and just up, up, up. And the more you push in, and this fan brush sucks. That doesn't work. Come back to our bigger brush here. Gonna fix our happy little accident there with this thing. If it starts doing that, it's not going to work how we want it to work. And bright. bright. So we may be able to use this though for our um, highlight here. What we'll do for that is just the littlest bit of the liquid white, put it on both sides of our brush, and come in here with the tip, and just kind of highlight our, getting lighter and lighter and lighter as we go down. And 
because this brush sucks so bad, I have to come in and fix it. But that's okay. We're gonna put uh, we're gonna put colors on it, and I'm throwing this away. <clears throat> Can't even do anything with that. Just kind of blur that up a little bit. We'll have to put something in the front now because I don't like it. But first, we'll pop this thing out. And you know what we could do? We could put like a like a stick. We'll take your eye away from that. Christmases be right. All right, so let's put on, let's get some big trees over on this side. We can finish up this side, and then we'll go in and do the uh, lights. So we want it to be closer to us than this tree, which is about that high. So if we do it up a little bit more, we should be good. Again, the more you go down, the harder you push in. And the trick is not to let it get crazy wide on the way down. And just kind of go back and forth, back and forth until it's kind of lives below where the cabin is. So it looks like it's in front. It's taller than our tree, so it looks like it's in front of us. And just like that, you got a little tree there. We'll get some more of this black. You can just grab some black from there. It doesn't matter. Mix it all up. Let's do one that's kind of, looks like he kind of, maybe a moose stepped on him or something when he was growing. Came growing off to the side like this guy. Right down there. Again, we don't want to get too crazy big at the bottom. I think that looks good, but what looked cool the other day, I put in this teeniest little, tiniest little evergreen tree. It was so cute. What I'm going to do is back and forth just on the Top corner up here. We're gonna do a little guy right off to the side. And just very lightly touch. You don't wanna make this guy humongous. Just like that. What we can do at the bottom is just pull out some shadows. Kind of on the same line as our hill over here. Just grabbing the littlest bit of the tree pulling it down and then what we're gonna do is get one little dab of that dark see how much we got just from one little dab of it Bring that in what we can even do is take this shadow and match it up with our other bit over there so now we can see that this maybe not a shadow I shouldn't call it a shadow it's more of a snow bank or a hill now we can see we've got this, almost like this racetrack that's going around the mountain, around the trees, through the trees there. And we got our little guy's house that he built right there. Depending on the way you move your brush, you can change the shape of the land. So if you curve up, it's going to look like there's a hill here, right? Slightly curve up, get all of our brush strokes out. Curve up, curve up, curve up, curve up. So now it looks like we've got this nice sloping thing right to our little guy's cabin over here, which we're going to do more to, so don't worry about that. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a break and uh, get some more white on my palette here. And then we're going to show you guys a couple cool things that you can do just by dabbing in a bit of color like that. Make a little bit of grass that lives out there. And then when we get some more white, we can uh, brighten it up. There we go. So, get that all colored in. So what I'm doing here is just kind of popping in a couple grass bits, just literally a couple. I always overdo it. And you can swipe up and you can pull to the side. Swipe up and they look like little bits of grass there. And then what we can do with our knife, that sometimes looks cool, is just a little bit of line right there. And we'll just make a little grassy guy that sticks off here. You want to make sure you don't let your knife slide. 
take it and it's going to scrape off your paint and just lay it down there. At the end of the face of that, okay, put a little grassy bush sticking on again. And then what we'll do is we'll get a little bit more color here. Now that we're back from our break, we've got our green, yellow, orange, and red here. Uh, the more you mix these two, the more orange it'll actually get. This will show up yellow on our canvas if we were going to put it there just like that. Luckily, we're not. We're going to mix it with a bunch of liquid white that we're going to get. And we're going to come in and pop our little Christmas lights all over everything. Over here. And just the littlest bit. And then come in and just highlight our tree. Just a tiny bit. You don't want a lot of... You don't want to ruin that shape that we made. The more you go down, the darker you get. So since we're going to just be in the mood to do that, let's just do it on both sides of this guy. Like I said, very lightly touch. You don't want to smush the shape that we created. Right? Kind of want to follow along what you already laid down, but not push too hard. And like I said, when we get to the bottom, just let it get darker. You want the tops brighter than the bottoms. Try not to mush over and don't do too much. The only reason I'm going so fast is because I know the shape I'm looking for. And I've done it before. If you're kind of new, you really want to go slow because you could make the coolest little thing, the coolest look, and then all of a sudden you went too fast and covered everything up. So that's literally all we need right there. Wash our brush off and the paint thinner. Onto our paper towel. Just like that. All right, so what I said we would do was put in a bunch of Christmas lights, so that's what we're gonna do now. Otherwise, why are we listening to Christmas music if we're not putting in Christmas lights, right? It's November, for heck's sake. My true love sent to me. All right. I could be the singing painter. What do you guys think about that? Turn pipers piping. All right, let's see. We're going to get our smallest little brush here and decide what I want to do first. First, I want to put in a little window. So we're going to scrape off our paint and the shape of our window just a little bit. Look at how much came off. So there's a lot of paint on there. You don't want to try to add more when there's a ton that's already on there. Grab our yellow. And this will let people know there is somebody home at the residence. All right? Don't want to make it real bright, but then again, you don't want to overdo it too much either. And then we'll take the littlest bit of our liquid white and kind of shape out. It's so shaky today. Let me get my uh, let me get my yardstick out, man. I can't even make a window. There we go. Just kind of do it until you like it. And very, very, very lightly pull down. If you have like a big ridge there back in with our dark shape and what I like to do in my cabin is you take our knife and go straight down kind of push hard and that'll make another board like another board and then what we really need to do is accent the corner of our cabin which is right here that's the front corner and if you get down to the bottom and you can't make it there you just use a small end small edge of the knife like that, so we can tell we've got our walls, our cabin's kind of facing off to the side. We don't have much at the base of him, so what we can do with that is put in a couple little bushes. Right? Get our little bristle brush here, just very lightly, and then kind of come over your cabinet, not too much, remember, because it's gonna, it's real thick up there. So, pop in a little bush, come back at some more dark. Maybe another guy in front of him. Don't want to overdo it though. Come back here, very lightly pull out, and then this guy pull out in front of that guy, so we can tell that there's a bush there. Yeah, it kind of covers up the bottom of our cabin, makes it look real nice. We'll wash this off real quick, get all the dark color off of it, because we want to come in and highlight those bushes with our liquid white and a little bit of red. Why not? Just very lightly. Remember, don't cover all the way down to, the, to your bush either. And then let's try to change up the flavor just a little bit. A little bit of yellow. You don't want to cover the bottom of your bush. <clears throat> no, 
otherwise you'll have to redo everything. It just won't look right with a bunch of white sticking up on the top of there. Kind of blend that out a little. We know we got somebody home, but you know what we're missing? That's I have on my cabin is a little chimney. So I like to paint a chimney on my cabins. What I do is get the smallest little edge, the smallest roll on the edge of the knife, and just decide where we want our chimney in the back, and just pull to the side slightly. Just slightly. Like it off. You can even take it at the base of our thing, and this is so thick, so just very lightly, and pull down our snow. Make it look real globby on the top of our roof. And then with our liner brush, just get the littlest dab of of uh, pure titanium white and just kind of lay it on very lightly. And you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to go straight up. And remember, the top of it has to be bigger than the bottom. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. It's going to look weird. There we go. Wipe that off of our little liner brush. We got that. We got that. So what we can do now, since we've added little bits of uh, liquid white to the bottom of our light colors here, you can just mix it until you like the color of it. It doesn't have to be dark. Do you want to, you kind of want it to be a little bit light to be able to see it, right? And then we can just start every so often put a green dot. You don't want to do them too close to each other. I've never done this actually, so me and you are learning together. But in my mind, I don't want them in the same spots and I don't want them too close to each other because we're coming in with all these other bits of lights, right? So we'll go from green into the yellow. I don't know if you guys can see me mixing it here. You just want it light enough to stick to this thicker color. And you want it bright enough to show. Otherwise, what's the point? Take our yellow, just kind of dab it on in places. I'm trying to get our orange here. Liquid wide into our orange. Come in here, dab those on. If they're not the same color, then they're gonna show up nicely. You don't want to have a bunch of the same color. You know, your tree can't just, unless you just want white lights on it, you could do that. But in my house, we do a mixture of white and colored lights. So this is my tree. I'm gonna paint it how I want it to look. And I'm just going in between all the other dots I made with our red here and just dabbing it on very lightly until I like the way that it looks. And I'd say that looks pretty neat, actually. Let's do it on this other tree back here. Go back, start with our green again. You can start with whatever color you want. I, I just chose green. And do this guy and just every so often just pop in a bit of green all the way down to the bottom. Some of our red was still on our brush, and that came through, which is fine. We'll go mix up our yellow. A little bit brighter than our green. We're going to touch it everywhere. Go back and get our orange. Still haven't cleaned our brush. But it's starting to get a little dark, which means we'll just need a little bit more of our paint. Dab it on there. Wherever you want. You decide where to go. And then that off, get some more of our red, pop in some red guys up here, just like that, it's looking pretty Christmassy you guys, pretty Christmassy, now I'm going to go back and just do these bushes in the front here, because you know, we need a few lights, right, mix from green to yellow, Green's getting a little bit diluted here. It's not looking like green anymore, so we'll just remix another little pile. And it's hard to see on these front bushes, but it's there. Like that. Get our red. Oh, that's one of my favorite songs. I'm not going to sit here and whistle it for you guys, though. It would be annoying. Got our red on that bush, got our red on this bush, and all of a sudden we've got tons of color on our little Christmassy bushes. And it looks, I mean it doesn't look bad, but it just looks a little weird to me. So, get a little bit of our shadowy, a little bit of our snow, 
back over and just muffle these up a bit. And we get this rainbow in our roof that we gotta cover up. What that's gonna look like is a bunch of reflection of light off of your trees that are kind of bouncing off the snow of your roof. ruining our shape and then drop on a bit of the wider paint to make it like snow. Excellent. Looks good to me guys. Right there, we're learning together. Let's do it. Alright, I like that. That's not bad. Kind of muff up our Take that. Just pull it out. Now, I'd say that looks pretty dang cool. Seems like it's missing something though. It seems like we need something in the foreground, like a. Well, we're back from our break, and turns out it wasn't recording. The camera wasn't recording the whole time. We did all of our little Christmas lights and our bushes and our snow and everything else. So. Besides having to do a whole new video over again, uh, I'll just quickly explain that we used our knife to kind of mush on our snow here very lightly. Uh, we mixed up all of our different light colors here with the liquid white and just very lightly came in with the smallest little brush and just dabbed ever so lightly. And you don't want to make all your greens or all your red lights all together, right? They got to be sort of split up. So just randomly across your little bushes. And then what I did was I took the smallest little bit of yellow Kind of put it in here in our snow to give that light reflection from all those lights and I added our birds up here did the signature down here and just kind of globbed on all the rest of this white to make it look like really thick you know snow banks the snow is kind of blowing around it's a really cold day I also added in a chimney with the littlest bit of smoke there don't need to put too much highlight on these like we did here because they're so far in the distance you really can't see threw in a little bush every so often uh, with our fan brush literally you know how we like to do it just kind of pop it in like that and then take our brush and go sideways go up it gives us this little grassy effect it's really cool this one we can go up like that and just make it whatever shape you want to make it it is totally up to you there we go and like that, uh, sorry about the mix up in the camera. We spent, we literally just spent a whole lot of time over in this area. Maybe touch these up. Everything else should have been done by then. But um, I hope you like it. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Um, you know, maybe we'll be able to record all the way through. So if you guys have any other questions, happylittlelandscapes.com, at happylandscapeart on Etsy and on Facebook, uh, at happylittlelandscapes on Instagram. You